We're here at the Computing Conference 2017, SAI Conferences, and I'm here with Bertrand Combo. Yes, he's with the Northern Arizona University, and he is Professor of Practice, but your specialty is cybersecurity, right? That's right. Okay, so you have been uh, researching an area in cybersecurity that people find surprising. That's right. Tell me. Well, I am, um, I am researching the use of nanotechnology for cybersecurity. Okay. And people say, what's the relationship? Yeah. And um, what's in, in the cybersecurity, we are using the, the cryptography of the 80s, the one that was using uh, RSA and all of those wonderful mathematical equations, yeah. but with a quantum computer and other powerful uh, element. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, the, you can actually break or think that we're going to be able to break those kind of encryptions. Yes. Which means that what I'm studying right now is replacing that cryptography wow. with nanomaterial, producing, let us say, a, a new form of keys yeah. that are highly random, and how to develop a full cryptography, key exchange, encryptions, password generations, and to have a sure. full system based on this new type of cryptography. Uh -huh. So where, where does the research for that cryptography start? Well, right now we, are, uh, we have uh, the three universities in Arizona working together. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, University of Arizona, Arizona State, and Northern uh, Arizona, we are working together. The, the materials is coming from the, the Arizona State. Okay. And in uh, at uh, Northern Arizona, we're working on the crypto system, uh -huh. and uh, currently we're also working with the uh, Air Force Research Lab. Okay, so uh, what, do the, what does the, the Air Force Lab uh, provide? Well, I've been spending uh, part of my time there, uh, having access to advanced nanomaterials sure. and, uh, and laboratories, uh, mm -hmm. uh, resources above and beyond mine. Okay, so um, what is what is the challenge that you're facing right now? Well, right now what I'm moving is essentially moving from the proof of concept mm -hmm. to the implementation. Sure. And we see that as being a, a massive task. We mm -hmm. have to implement our ideas into, uh, into hardware. We have to test our software. We need to have multidiscipline. Sure, uh, I am teaching yeah. uh, math student, physics, electrical engineer, computer science, computer engineering, because each of them has a piece of the puzzle, which this is not a buzzword in my case. No, no, no. <laughs> There's a exactly. need to have all of those smart people working together. Okay, so, you know, so, so it's a lot of collaboration with a lot of people. That's so you right. have to communicate a lot. That is correct. Okay. And take advantage of everybody's expertise. Yes, yeah, sure. So, so what do you predict for the near future? When you would be back here in, let's say, a year, what would have happened in your research? Well, in my research work, what is, uh, we already have a proof of concept. Yep. Really exciting. Yep. The cryptography is working. In a year from now, I expect to have yep. uh, implementations mm -hmm. uh, into for the IoT and yeah. for Internet of Things. Yeah, yeah, yeah uh, sure. And then we're going to look at uh, maybe commercial applications and like whatever. What? Uh, what would be possible? We can actually use this type of concept uh, to replace cryptography. Hmm. Sure. And we can be, you know, uh, which is, is going to be equations of uh, what is first, second, and third. Okay. Uh, we have a lot of uh, a lot of uh, scientific work mm -hmm. uh, to develop. Yep. Uh, now we we also developing some type of a fuzzy logic. Yeah. Uh, and the reason is because. Uh, physical elements are not binary. Mm. They, they actually are, are fuzzy sometimes. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not bits. True. And, and, and that is another um, fascinating area. And we want to take advantage yeah. of the fuzziness in <laughs> cryptography yeah. to increase what's called entropy, yeah. which is essentially to make the system tougher than the, the bits uh, and the yeah. binary yeah. Uh, cryptography. Which, uh, that's another interesting area. So what pushing. would that result in in 10 years from now? What, we, what would we all uh, know then? Well, th the ambitions will be to have this cryptography to become mainstream yep. and to be used uh, potentially as, uh, as an extension of existing methods. Everywhere. 
that's obviously ambitious. Yes, and we but need why to start, not? We need to start. Uh, <laughs> yeah, sure. And uh, that's what we intend to do in the next in the next. Yeah, future. but maybe developments go fast, right? Well, we, we do have our prototype, and yeah, they are working exactly, already. Exactly. And uh, now we have to go to the next step. A lot of cooperation, like I say. Started there. And uh, yeah. But uh, you know, life is fun. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good way to end the conversation. That's life right. is fun, and life and, fun, yeah. and developments go fast. So. Well, you know, one of the things that I think is important. Uh, Cybersecurity could be defensive. You know, you're talking about learning from the past. Danger. Well, we think that the hacker mm -hmm. are preparing new methods, uh -huh, I see. which means that spending our time protecting us from the past yeah, is not going to be the same than perhaps coming with new uh, methods of cyber protection. So which means that I also think that it's an opportunity to switch to a new area. Yeah. The where the you know the cyber crime is not yet ready to go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we have to beat cyber crime. Yeah, we have to. We have to beat. <laughs> thank you so much, Bertrand. Thank, thank you, you very much, Chris. Yeah, thank you for watching. We're here at the computing conference, and you can see more clips and talks on the YouTube channel. Thanks.